بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم يا رب بالمصطفى بلغ مقاصدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرم مولاي صلي وسلم دائما أبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم Most honorable viewers and listeners, welcome once again to another episode of The Path of Noor on Noor TV. As you well know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instructed us in the Quran of Majid with the words, with the honor, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O believers, meaning the ones who have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who have believed in Islam and accepted and acknowledged Islam as their religion, as their deen, as their complete way of life. And then Allah Azza wa Jal, He gives us instructions. One of those instructions is found in Surah Al-Baqarah where He says, by addressing the believers with the words udkhulu fi silmi kafa that enter into the folds of islam exhaustively completely and as a muslim we are required to follow all of the commands and injunctions to comply with all of the instructions the divine instructions given to us by Allah Azza wa Jal, our Khalik, our Malik, our Raziq, our Creator, our Sustainer, our Ultimate Owner, the one to whom we are going to return to, the one to whom we have surrendered ourselves to. One of the meanings of Islam is to surrender. As mentioned elsewhere in Surah Al-Baqarah, Aslim, that's surrender. So we have surrendered to Allah Azza wa Jal. We cannot pick and choose and do the things that we like and reject those things which we dislike. Regardless of whether we like something or dislike it, it is the nafs which prevents us from liking something. Otherwise, a true believer, why wouldn't he like to be obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal? as obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his beloved Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is the essence of taqwa. It is the root of taqwa, the root of piety, the root of righteousness. Otherwise, in the Quran of Majid, it has been mentioned with reference to those people who accept some instructions and um, comply with some and reject others. That أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ That do you believe, then do you believe in some of the book and you reject other parts? You reject some of it? And this is in fact a disgrace if this is our position and our condition as being a believer we should endeavor we should strive to completely to wholly surrender ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is in our betterment it is in our interest and for our betterment that we comply with all of the divine instructions given to us by Allah Azza wa Jal and by his beloved Habib sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam then this indeed is the path of success and the path of nur and the believers are undoubtedly successful as mentioned in Suratul Mu'minun in the introductory ayat 
قد أفلح المؤمنون طب شو لي؟ The mu'minun are successful Not just in this dunya But in the akhirah too And by Fully surrendering to Allah Azza wa Jal And his beloved Habib Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam Striving to obey All of the ahkamat All of the commands Striving to become a muti' uh, An obedient abd Of Allah Azza wa Jal Striving for servitude to Allah, then this may involve some degree of hardship, undoubtedly. But this is nothing compared to the hardship that our predecessors, our master Sayyiduna Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, experienced and his illustrious companions. The Sahaba Kiram Ridwan Lai Ta'ala Alim Ajmain. We do not have to engage in such difficulty or adopt such hardship in our lives as they did, as our predecessors did. But if we do strive to comply with the commands of Allah and His beloved Habib, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam, then this will not go unrewarded. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala will reward us both in this dunya. And undoubtedly in the Akhirah. As the Quran says, Wal Akhiratu Khayrul Limanittaka as the Akhirah. And the Akhirah, it is better for the one who has fear, who is a muttaqi, who strives to become righteous, who strives to please Allah Azza wa Jal and his beloved Habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And one of those instructions that I want to talk to you about today, in today's episode of the path of noor is the importance of honoring our parents the importance of respecting and demonstrating reverence to our parents for a muslim and this is also complying with the divine instruction given to us by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved habib sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa it is also a way that we can demonstrate gratitude to our parents for bringing us up, for nurturing us, for protecting us, for educating us, for looking after us. You know, their, their gifts to us, their favors upon us are undoubtedly endless, which we cannot list, nor can we ever repay them for their infinite favors or the infinite favors that our parents have done for us there is no doubt about that and the ultimate favor is bringing us into this world it is done through the parents this is they are the suburb through which we were given this life in the quran of majid repeatedly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned for the believers for humans wa wasayna al insana bi walidayhi ihsana and we have enjoined to mankind to demonstrate ihsan towards his parents in surah bani israil allah azza wa jal mentions wa qada rabbuka it is mentioned in the quran the words of allah that it is the decree of your rab وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And the decree of your Rabb is that you do not worship anyone except Him. Immediately after mentioning and stressing and emphasizing His worship, Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And perform ihsan and what is ihsan kindness of the highest degree demonstrate kindness to the highest degree towards your parents adopt the most excellent treatment towards them when you are verbally conversing with them then this must be complied with that we adopt 
and we select, we choose the best possible words to speak to our parents whenever we are conversing with them. This is the demand of the Quran, the demand and command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran continues and elaborately explains. So by Allah Azza wa mentioning it adjacent to his worship, this demonstrates the importance this has in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the law. But immediately after his worship, he stresses. He, he doesn't say, he doesn't say that you perform salah. Although salah is undoubtedly important. Or you fast. Or you give zakah. Or you perform hajj. No. In this verse, immediately after talking about his worship, he says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And then elaborately explains, the Quran says, إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفِّمْ that if one of them, if one of them in the Kalkebara during your lifetime reaches old age, or both of them, or Kilahuma, then do not even say off. Meaning, do not even say a single word that could be annoying to them. Meaning, do not even express a single word of annoyance towards your parents. Walatanharhuma and do not shout at them. Do not raise your voice at them. And then the Quran advises us how we should speak to them. Wakullahuma and speak to them with qawlan karima with words of kindness, graceful words, words which are immersed in kindness and mercy. And the Quran continues and says, وَاخْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُرْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّ يَعْنِ صَغِيرًا And lower for them the wing of humility, meaning always be humble in their presence. Never show arrogance. Never demonstrate arrogance before your parents. Never raise your voice in front of those who taught you how to speak. You are conversing because of them. You are walking because of them. You are talking because of them. You are moving because of them. Their favours upon you are endless. How can you overlook them? How can we become oblivious of them? So lower for them the wing of humility out of kindness and you can never repay them for what they did to you. We can never repay. We are immensely indebted to our parents. Hence the Quran says that supplicate for them and say in the court of Allah Azza wa Jal and some scholars have recommended that these are the words we should also be saying in every salah. When we supplicate to Allah, then do not forget your parents in that supplication. They are those people who put themselves aside to please you. They forgot about their life. They forgot about their own luxuries, their desires. They would sacrifice them to please you, to satisfy you. So you can never repay them. We are immensely indebted to them. Hence, Allah says that as you can never repay them, so say, Rabbi irhamhuma. O my Rabb, irhamhuma. Show mercy upon them. Be merciful on both of them. O oh my Rabb, be merciful upon both of them. As they were kind to me. Kama Rabbayani Sadira when I was an infant. When I was a toddler, when I was a baby, 
they showed that mercy and kindness and grace to me, oh Allah, I cannot repay them. So you bless them. Oh Allah, you bless them with your kindness, with your mercy, with your grace. As the kindness and grace and mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal is indeed unique. As laysa kamithlihi shayun, there is nothing that can even be like Allah or be described to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing like Him. So His mercy has no limits. His kindness has no limits. His grace has no limits. So we should always remember this supplication to please Allah as it is His instruction that we keep our parents in our du'as, in our supplications. We keep making du'a for them. Elsewhere in the Quran, Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ushkur li wali walidayk. That be grateful to me and to your parents. Ushkur li. Be grateful to me and to both of your parents. And towards me, you are going to return. Towards me is the return. Wa ilayya al Directly next to his, next to the command of be grateful to me. He says, Wali walidayk, unto your parents. Meaning that if you will be grateful to your parents, if you will express shukr, demonstrate shukr, gratitude, gratefulness, thankfulness to your parents. Verbally and practically. One way is never to be disobedient to them, never to shout at them, to always employ kindest and the best and the most excellent treatment towards them. To never look at them in anger. To never shout at them. This is one way of expressing your gratefulness to them and complying with the command of Allah Azza wa Jal that Ushkur li walidayk. And when you have been grateful and thankful to your parents, both physically and verbally, then this is ultimately gratitude to Allah. As the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has mentioned in a hadith, Man lam yashkur in nasa, lam yashkur Allah. That whoever is not grateful to the people, then he is not grateful to Allah. He is na shukr. He is ungrateful to ultimately to Allah Azza wa Jal. And here a direct command has been made by Allah Azza wa Jal that express gratefulness, gratitude, thankfulness to your parents. Likewise, in the ahadith e Mubarakah, it has been mentioned by the Messenger of Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, our Master, our Saviour, the leader of the Prophets, the coolness of our eyes, our mind, our heart, our soul. Many ahadith e Mubarakah have been mentioned expressing the importance of revering one's parents, of honouring our parents. Sayyiduna Abu Huraira radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he reports, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ رَغِيمَ أَنفُهُ رَغِيمَ أَنفُهُ رَغِيمَ أَنفُهُ That may, that means that may he be disgraced, may he be disgraced, may he be disgraced. May he be disgraced. May he be disgraced. Then the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was asked, قِيلَ مَنْ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهُ Who, O Messenger of Allah? Our Nabi alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke, مَنْ أَدْرَكَ وَالِدَيْهِ عِنْدَ الْكِبَارِ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا ثُمَّ لَمْ يَدْخُلِ الْجَنَّةِ Whoever found, meaning during his lifetime, whoever found one or both of his parents in old age, then he does not enter Jannah. Meaning, what does this hadith mean? This hadith of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means that whoever finds one or both of his parents in old age, then he does not enter Jannah. May he be disgraced. Why? Because he should have entered Jannah through serving his parents. Through their khidma, through their service. Whether this service involves financial service or physical khidma service. This is mandatory upon us 
that we demonstrate service to our parents. We serve them. Likewise, it has been mentioned by, reported by Sayyiduna Mu'awiyah and Mu'awiyah and Ma'awiyah Tabni Jahimata Anna Jahimata Jaa ila Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam that the father of Hazrat Ma'awiyah Jahima he came to the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wa Sallam and said Ya Rasulullah Aradtu an agzuwa wa qad jitu astashiruka that Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Sallam I want to engage in a battle. I want to do jihad. I have that intention. So he went to the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and to do mashwara for the Prophet والسلام's prophetic suggestion and guidance. The Messenger of Allah وسلم, asked him, Halaka min ummin? Do you have a mother? He said, Naam, Ya Rasulullah. Then the Prophet وسلم, said فَأَلْزِمْهَا فَأَلْزِمْهَا فَإِنَّ الْجَنَّةَ عِنْدَ رِجْلِيهَا Meaning, then strive to serve her. Make serving your mother binding upon yourself. Because paradise lies in the feet of your mother. Meaning, in her service. If you serve your mother, if you serve your parents, then undoubtedly, this is how you will be guaranteed paradise. First and foremost, undoubtedly, we have to be a believer to qualify for paradise. Thereafter, the service of your parents. According to this hadith of Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, that service, serving, serving your parents, doing their khidmah, serving them, will qualify you for the reward of paradise. Likewise, Sayyiduna Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he also reports a hadith mentioned in Mishkatul Masabih. He says, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, Man asbaha muti'an lillahi fi walidayhi, asbaha lahu babani maftuhani min al jannati. That the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that whoever wakes up in the morning in the state that he is obedient to Allah Azza wa Jal regarding his parents, meaning the command of Allah is that you be obedient to your parents, respectful to them, revere them, honor them, love them. Then whoever has obeyed that command of Allah Azza wa Jal and then his morning in this state that he is obedient to this command of Allah regarding the parents, and for such a person two doors of paradise remain open for him. And if he has one of those parents alive, then one door of paradise shall remain open for him. And whoever does his mourning, the Prophet ﷺ continues, وَمَنْ أَصْبَحَ عَاسِيًا لِلَّهِ فِي وَالِدَيْهِ أَصْبَحَ لَهُ بَابَانِ مَفْتُوحَانِ مِنَ النَّارِ إِنْ كَانَ وَاحِدًا فَوَاحِدًا that whoever does his mourning in a state that he is disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regards to his parents, then two doors of the hellfire remain open for such a person. And if he only has one of his parent, parents alive and he has done his mourning in such a state that his parents are displeased with him, he has disobeyed Allah azza wa jal with regards to his parents, then one door of the hellfire shall remain open for such a person. And then the questioner asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that all rajul wa in dhulamahu and if they do injustice to him, meaning that if they are cruel to him, what then? What is the ruling then, Ya, ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What if they are unjust to him as people we see and we hear children today or teenagers or grown adults saying that they are unjust, unjust to me, they are cruel to me, they are unfair to me. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's prophetic words say, wa in dhulamahu, wa in dhulamahu, wa in dhulamahu, meaning that even if they have been unjust to him, even if they have been unjust to him, even if they have been unjust to him, that this is the state he will find the hellfire for him if he has been disobedient to Allah with regards to his parents. Respectable viewers and listeners, stay with us. I will see you right after the break.